Hello and welcome back to week five, unit four of the Open SAP course, Introduction to Statistics for Data Science. In this unit, we'll look at using the normal distribution um, to calculate probability. The normal distribution refers to a family of continuous probability distributions. The graph of the normal distribution depends on two factors, the mean and the standard deviation. The mean of the distribution determines the location of the center of the graph. And the standard deviation determines the height and width of the graph. All normal distributions look like a symmetric bell-shaped um, curve. The graphs show that when the um, standard deviation is small, the curve is tall and narrow. And when the standard deviation is big, the curve is short and wide. The area under the normal distribution can be used to calculate probabilities for a normally distributed random variable. This means that the probability that a normal random variable x equals any particular value is zero. The probability that x is greater than a is equal to the area underneath the normal curve between a and plus infinity, the non-shaded area in the diagram. The probability that x is less than a is equal to the area under the normal curve between a and minus infinity. That's the shaded area in the diagram. The total area under the curve is equal to one. Every normal distribution, regardless of its mean or standard deviation, conforms to the following rule. About 68% of the area under the curve falls within one standard deviation of the mean. About 95% of the area under the curve falls within two standard deviations of the mean. And about 99.7% of the area under the curve falls within three standard deviations of the mean. This is known as the empirical rule, or the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Therefore, given a normal distribution, most outcomes will be within three standard deviations of the mean. Question. 95% of students at school are between 1.2 and 1.8 meters tall. Assuming this data is normally distributed, calculate the mean and standard deviation. Well, the solution. The mean equals 1.2 plus 1.8 divided by 2, and so that equals 1.5 meters. 95% is two standard deviations either side of the mean, a total of four standard deviations. Therefore, one standard deviation equals 1.8 meters minus 1.2 meters divided by four, which equals 0.15 meters. This can then be visualized on a normal curve, as you can see on the slide. How can you use this theory in practice? To find, to find the probability associated with a normal random variable, use a graphing calculator, an, an online normal distribution calculator, or a normal distribution table. There are lots of normal distribution um, calculators available, and there are uh, some links given, so you can uh, choose one for yourself. You are now going to see some simple examples, um, simple example calculations. Question, on average, a light bulb lasts 300 days with a standard deviation of 50 days. Assuming that bulb life is normally, is normally distributed, what is the probability that the light bulb will last at most 365 days? Well, the solution, given a mean score of 300 days and a standard deviation of 50 days, you need to find the cumulative probability that bulb life is less than or equal to 365 days. The value of the normal random variable is 365 days. The mean is equal to 300 days. The standard deviation is equal to 50 days. You enter these values into the normal distribution calculator and compute the cumulative probability. The answer, the probability that x is less than 365 days equals 0.9032. 
there is a 90% chance that a light bulb will burn out within 365 days. Question. Scores on an IQ test are normally distributed. If the test has a mean of 110 and a standard deviation of 20, what's the probability that a person who takes the test will score between 90 and 120? Well, the solution. Here you want to know the probability that the test score falls between 90 and 120. To do this, you use the following simple formula. The probability that x is between 90 and 120 equals the probability x is less than 120 minus the probability that x is less than 90. You can use the normal distribution calculator to compute both probabilities on the right side of the equation. Um, to compute the probability x is less than 120, you enter the following inputs into the, the um, calculator. The value of the normal random variable is 120, the mean is 110, and the standard deviation is 20. You find that the, the, the probability that x is less than 120 is 0.6915. To compute probability that x is less than 90, you enter the following inputs into the calculator. The value of the normal random variable is 90, the mean is 110, and the standard deviation is 20 you find that prob probability of x is less than 90 is 0.1587. We use these findings to compute the final answer as follows. The probability that x is between 90 and 120 is equal to 0.6915 minus 0.1587, which equals 0.5328. Therefore, about 53% probability that the test scores will fall between 90 and 120. Alternatively, you can use the calculator and enter the lower and upper values, and it will compute everything for you directly. This is shown in the picture on the slide. Question. A student achieved a score of 900 in an exam. The mean test score is 825 with a standard deviation of 100. Assuming that test scores are normally distributed, what proportion of students achieved a higher score than 900? Well, the solution, as part of this solution to this problem, you assume that test scores are normally distributed. In this way, you use the normal distribution to model the distribution of test scores in the real world. You can use the normal distribution calculator to compute the probability x is greater than 900 equals to 0.2266. You enter the parameters and the calculator computes that, um, that you would expect 22.66% of, of the students to achieve a higher score than 900. To summarize, the normal distribution refers to a family of continuous probability distributions um, they, uh, the area under the normal distribution curve can be used to calculate probabilities for a normally distributed random variable. There are lots of normal distribution calculators available. Given the mean and the standard deviation, the cal calculator can be used to calculate the area under the normal curve, the probability, less than a value, greater than a value, between values, outside two values. In the next unit, we will consider hypotheses, hypothesis testing in more detail.